So there are a million different videos out there on how to build cabinet boxes using different kinds of joinery. And I decided to put it to the test to see which one would work best for me. So I built three identical cabinet boxes using three different kinds of joinery. The first one I built using pocket holes. The second one I built using the Festool Domino. And the third one I built using a router and routing out dados and grooves. So I timed exactly how long it took me to finish each box beginning to end using the different method. And along the way, I'm gonna talk about the different challenges I face. And at the end, I'm going to reveal my favorite way of doing it and the one I'm gonna use going forward. So stick around to see the conclusions. So for the design of the cabinet boxes, I'm going with this very simple yet elegant design of two side panels, one bottom panel, and then four stretcher pieces, two on top and two on the back. The reason I'm going with stretchers instead of panels here is because plywood is very expensive right now. And I'm not going to need a full piece on the top since I'm going to have a separate piece of MDF for the countertop and you're not going to see the back because I'm going to have drawers in these particular boxes. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be making these cabinets out of plywood and I'm using birch plywood in this case. So I need to break down these big 4x8 sheets into the panels and stretchers that will eventually comprise the components of the cabinet. And I'm actually going to be breaking them down with my track saw. And here I'm cutting down two sheets at the same time, so they're stacked on top of each other, just clamped together, lined up on the factory edges. The track saw in this case is actually really helpful to get your cuts nice and straight, but you can also use a circular saw and a straight edge clamped down to the boards. I'm making both my rip cuts and my cross cuts to get out my full panels. As for the stretchers, I cut those down to their final with using my table saw. All right, so the cabinet I'm gonna start with is the one I'm gonna assemble with pocket holes. I'm using a drill driver to drill out the pocket holes. I'm using an impact driver. I am drilling the pocket holes using the assistance of this Craig jig. Also have some screws, wood glue, and finally I am using these square clamps to help hold the pieces in place as I drill in the fasteners. So I'm gonna start the clock. I'm gonna see how quickly I can assemble this. Timer is set. All right, so the first step in creating the pocket hole cabinet was to drill out the actual pocket holes. So I am drilling two pocket holes on each side of the stretcher, so four total per stretcher. Then I'm also doing four pocket holes per side of the bottom panel. I'm using a Craig pocket hole jig to drill out those holes. And there's a bunch of different types of these. Mine's about a mid-level one and it really saves a lot of time to buy one of these. It's a great investment if you're first getting into woodworking. So here, what I mentioned earlier, I'm using these corner clamps to hold the pieces in place. The main problem with pocket holes and the reason they're a challenge with a lot of this furniture is because when you're drilling in the screws, the boards tend to move as you're drilling the screws in. So it's hard to get a very precise joint. So these clamps really help out to make that joint as precise as possible with having that pressure and keeping the boards in place as the screw goes in. And I'm also making sure that I use wood glue in these joints as well to make the joint as secure and tight as possible. Another thing that's important to do when using pocket holes is to strategically place them so they are never on a customer facing side. So here I have the pocket holes on the back side of the cabinet and also on the underside of the cabinet. So that way you never really see them when the whole thing comes together. Same thing with the top here. I have them upward facing since I'm going to have a separate piece for the countertop on top of these base cabinets. minutes. Pretty rough. I could do better, but... Alright, this next setup, we have the big boy tool, the domino, wood glue also. We've got the clamps, got my dominoes here, pencil. I think that's it. We'll try it. Yep, 
Yes, this is actually where I spent most of the time on this domino cabinet doing, which is standing there staring at the pieces, trying to figure out how exactly I use this tool. So I eventually landed on a process of marking out where I needed to drill the mortises for the dominoes so that they would line up with the bottom panel. What I eventually ended up doing was staging the boards in their final layout and alignment and then putting a pencil mark on where that joint was actually going to be and the dominoes I wanted to have in those places. There was definitely some learning here. I definitely had to dial in the depth of cut that I wanted on these mortises as well as the size of the dominoes I wanted to use. But eventually I landed on all of the right settings to where the cabinet aligned properly and all the pieces came together nicely. So I had to drill mortises on both the side panels, the bottom panel, and all the stretchers to make sure that everything would come together at the end. And so after I had all those holes drilled out, then it was just time to put everything together using dominoes and wood glue, with the dominoes being the main thing that keeps the boards aligned in place as you assemble it. And throughout this process, I was starting to realize how powerful the domino can be once you get more familiar with it and how to use it and how to make your measurements. Because as I was putting this panel on, it was extremely impressive to me just how accurate and precise this was, just in terms of the consistency of where the stretchers and bottom panel lined up to the edges of the, of the side panels. Everything came together perfectly albeit with a ton of planning and thinking things through. But yeah, I was very impressed with the precision of it. So after I got the cabinet assembled and all the dominoes and pieces were in place, then it was just time to add some bar clamps and parallel clamps to hold everything together while the glue dried. 53 minutes. Not what I expected. Hmm. Alright, now it's time to make a cabinet with a router. So I'm going to be using a router with a straight bit. This is a three quarter inch bit. Some wood glue, a chisel, a straight edge, and clamps, which are in use right now, but I'll shift it over to this cabinet once I finish building it. All right, so for the router, the most important step here is measuring the distance from the top part of my mounting plate on the router to where the end of the bit is. So basically, I need to position this clamped down straight edge to where the bit lines up with the very bottom of the panel. So that way I can ensure that the actual width of the dado that I'm routing out is the exact width of the three quarter inch plywood boards that I'm going to be mounting in there. So routing out the dado for the bottom panel was pretty straightforward. I'm just routing out the entire bottom edge of both side panels. And then as far as routing out the dados for the stretchers, I have to be a little more precise here and just route out the distance of the width of the stretchers. And I'm just squaring them off here with a chisel. So all of the dados are going to be only on the two side panels. So I'm going to have a full dado along the bottom edges of both, and then two smaller dados on the back and two smaller ones on the top. Once all the dado grooves were cut out, then it was just time to assemble it and put some glue in those dados and clamp it together. So I'm using parallel clamps to mount it along the bottom. Not totally necessary, you can also use bar clamps which are a little bit cheaper and honestly just as effective. And again here it is very important to have that depth of the dado to be as precise as you can get it so that when you actually go to put the boards into those dados that they're not sticking up or protruding from any point of the panels. 
last couple stretchers I'm putting in are just a little bit tight since I have it partially clamped, but I was able to hammer them in place with a mallet. It's actually pretty satisfying to put one of these cabinets together. Kind of reminds me of putting together one of those Lincoln log cabins back in the day, fitting the boards into the dado grooves. And time, 53.41. Wow, felt like I was pretty efficient on that one. Okay, so here's my final thoughts on the three different types of joinery. So starting with the pocket holes, I would say the pros are that it's easy to use, so you don't have to do a ton of planning or dialing in of tools. You can really just start drilling the holes and joining the wood together with screws wherever you need. And it's also relatively inexpensive. So depending on the jig that you get, you can get one for pretty cheap and it'll still get the job done well, it just might take a little longer. On the con side though, I would say it's less consistent. And that, by that I mean it's the boards moving around as you drill in the screws. Even after you clamp it, it still has some risk there. And also I would say that you really can't save a ton of time even after you master it. You're not gonna get your time way down from doing this because it's still gonna take a certain amount of time to drill out the holes, drive in the screws, and clamp it together, which I consider pretty much a requirement to do with pocket holes. Moving on to the domino, I would say that it's very consistent and also very precise. And it also has the potential of saving a ton of time once you get more familiar and you master the tool. It's also very clean and oddly pretty satisfying to put stuff together once you have all the, all the dominoes in place. It's really cool. And I like learning new tools. On the con side, and probably the biggest deal breaker for most, is that it's very expensive. And I'd also add to that list of cons that it has a steep learning curve. Alright, and then finally, talking about the router method, I would say that the pros there are that it is precise and it's also really strong joinery and finally it is pretty inexpensive right so you can get a router for pretty cheap and just use the straight edge method that I did you can also get a router table or cut dados out on a table saw but you can you can get away with it for relatively inexpensive although you do have to invest in some bigger clamps if you're thinking about doing cabinets on the con side I would say that it's gonna be a little slower so it's always gonna take some time to measure things out, make your marks, and have all your tools dialed in. And it's also going to be a little more difficult to do, I would say, than pocket holes for sure. Just a little more mastery, a little higher learning curve. And then lastly, I'd say it's definitely the messiest, so it's kicking up a lot of dust and stuff as you're using it. So with all that in mind, there's obviously a lot of considerations and pros and cons, and quite honestly, any one of the three methods will work just fine. They all have a pretty similar end result. But I'm gonna pick a winner, and that is going to be the Domino. And that is solely because I spent a ton of money on it, and I have to pick it. And two, I think there's a ton of potential there to save me time. I know I didn't have a faster time in this particular video, but I can totally see how once you get more familiar and gain the mastery over this tool, that it has a ton of potential to really reduce the time of joining wood. In the second place, I'm gonna give it to the pocket holes because of how simple and easy they are to do and still extremely effective. And last place is going to be the router, which honestly I thought that cabinet came out really great and it was still fun to do, but I gotta rank them and those are my rankings. But let me know in the comments if you have differing thoughts on this. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. By the way, a little experiment. If I say the word subscribe, do you see the little subscribe button light up? I'll say it one more time. Subscribe. You see a little rainbow thing light up? I think it's a pretty cool feature at YouTube. But anyway, consider subscribing if you think I've earned it. And thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one.